A month ago, the U.S. government said 75% of the giant spill had simply disappeared. But our Matt Gutman is in touch with scientists who are on the ocean tonight probing the ocean floor and finding oil. It's a mystery that has bedeviled scientists and the government. Over 180 million gallons of crude spilled, but much of it seemed to vanish. So where did it go? One group of scientists now think they have the answer. Down. No, it's not gone. It's in places where nobody looks for it. A lot of it is on the bottom. Over the past couple of weeks, Joy and other researchers have pulled up columns of sediment from the seafloor, finding a layer of sludge over two inches thick and extending up to 70 miles out from the wellhead. We reached Joy via satellite phone just a few miles away from the spill zone. What is the potential fallout for wildlife or marine life? I have yet to see a living shrimp, a living worm, nothing. These guys basically just got suffocated by a flood of this stuff. Joy cautions these findings are preliminary, but it's enough of a threat to larger fish and perhaps humans that she feels compelled to talk about it. The last time she felt so compelled, she and a team of scientists had just discovered oil plumes lurking in the Gulf. Federal scientists immediately demanded they stop talking about it, but later acknowledged the plumes exist. Do you feel that you've been bullied? I think that's kind of fair to say. And when Joy and others challenged the government's recent assertion that 75% of the oil was gone, the administration tried to discredit them. This time, federal scientists are listening. ABC News has learned the government will this week launch a massive new initiative to hunt for the oil still in the water and in the sediment, and that they've enlisted dozens of scientists, including Joy, for help. Matt Gutman, ABC News. Heard today that the oil company BP is challenging the government estimate of how much oil spilled into the Gulf. The government calculated 206 million gallons. BP says the real amount was just half that, which would save BP nearly three billion in fines. But the debate also continues about the impact of the spill. And tonight, Matt Gutman takes us down to the ocean floor on a submarine ride designed to see what has been happening there. And he's with us now, Matt. Hey, good evening, Diane. Meet Alvin. Now, this is the sub that discovered the Titanic, and it took us and a group of researchers 5,000 feet down to the ocean floor, the culmination of six months of their research into the missing oil. And what we found down there was a world shellacked by it. And we are down almost. 5,000 feet down what should look like a forest is a desert. Fish, crabs, even sea cucumbers normally thrive here. And on this moonscape, millions of dead worms. Everything is dead. Yeah, it looks like everything's dead. Mandy Joy leads a University of Georgia team investigating how much oil is left on the seafloor. They were shocked by 80 square miles of devastation. We had taken Alvin, a deep sea sub, as close as you can get to where the oil gushed into the Gulf for a hundred days, just two miles away, where oily residue cakes the seafloor. That looks like about three or four inches of, of material. It even smears the sub's instruments. You can actually see the oil smudging in the tubes. We turned on the ultraviolet light, and look at this. Those phosphorescent ink blots, all oil. We're just trying to figure out um, whether your numbers were accurate. And what... So we asked the government about all of this oil. They say they're still trying to calculate how much oil is down here. Like most, they're not sure how big the impact area is, or how long it could last. Many of these things are going to take a long, long time to turn over, years to decades. But catching a glimpse of this devastation in person is invaluable. Comfortable, yeah. it's not. I just want to see the, the array of legs here that attaches to people. So this is where the pilot would sit, and he'd be kind of scrunched up against this little tiny window there looking in there. Inside, it's about the size of a car's interior. But to dive into these waters is to enter a world of splendor. It's also to enter a small fraternity, a very icy rite of passage. Dan, I want you to see this cup. We took this, put it on Alvin, went 5,000 feet down. The pressure there is so intense that it shrank it to this. Now, Alvin is going back out to sea to hunt for more oil this weekend. It's its last trip out. It's going to be retired after more than 40 years in service. Diane. That was an incredible trip. Show us again how small is that pressurized cup. You see what it says yeah. to ABC News? Right. 
Yeah, that's incredible. That's what it is at the bottom of the ocean and a moonscape you saw, as you said, Matt Gutman.